up. I didn't really know much about my environment. Um, I like being outside, but I, you know, couldn't tell the difference between a native species and a non-native. I was always interested in the outdoors and nature and things like that. Uh, really more excited by marine biology and I was going to be a marine biologist. My connection to the Hawaii conservation community began when I was born. I was born five years before Hawaii became a state. From our house on Liliha Street, right next to Liliha Bakery, I could look down toward the ocean and see the tops of trees, corrugated roofs, and off in the distance, Aloha Tower, standing as the only tall structure in those days. Everybody was in their little niche doing their own thing, but people really weren't getting together and talking and sharing ideas. Back in the day, it was primarily the national parks uh, service folks, um, and then, you know, some miscellaneous agencies in addition to that, but um, the Oahu Army Natural Resources Program didn't exist, the watershed partnerships didn't exist. We were about a half a dozen uh, agencies charged with uh, maintaining and preserving and even restoring Native Hawaiian ecosystems, but we spent more time sandbagging each other than we did uh, trying to work together. I've seen with, with my own eyes, I've seen four species of birds that are now extinct. Nobody will ever see them again. My name is Tia Williams and this poem is called The Last O'o. I am the last one. My ohana, my friends, my neighbors have all perished. That fateful day I can still remember. The day that started the extinction of my loved ones. I was there sipping on the luscious nectar of the ohi alehua's crimson blossoms. My cake flitted in and out of golden pools of sunlight. Warmth cascaded from the sky in golden brilliance. So we found ourselves in an era of uncontrolled growth that resulted in a decline in our quality of life, a decline in the way that we were treating each other, and a distancing of ourselves from our communities and from the natural world. In the early 80s, a young man named Alan Holt was working as a volunteer in the national parks and for other outfits, and he wondered why we spent so much time fighting each other when we ought to be allies. So the idea that uh, Calvin Takeda and Sam Cooke and the other leaders of the Nature Conservancy came up with was, you know, why can't Hawaii be like it is for astronomy, a world center for studying an aspect of nature that's most accessible here in Hawaii? The MacArthur Foundation felt that it was a very good opportunity to provide some funding to the Nature Conservancy to bring together these two groups, the researchers and natural resource managers, to begin a dialogue and to discuss what's the highest priority conservation research needs of the natural resource community. In the early days, there were conservation conferences in which conservation managers would get together, but they were small things. They were occurring, for example, at Hawaii Volcanoes National Park in the magma house, which was part of a small research barracks perched on the edge of Kilauea. From this original Hawaii Conservation Biology Initiative, the thing that then really made it take off, we had the money, we had the ideas, was the University of Hawaii stepping up, Ken Kaneshiro stepping up and saying, we have an evolutionary biology program, we will add conservation biology to that, and we'll form a secretariat at the university. The early days of the secretariat, they also had a forum halfway through the year that was largely policy makers. But the nice thing that, that has remained consistent about this annual conservation conference was it provides a venue, call it training, or simply a way to pat people on the back that are out there building fences, killing weeds, planting native plants to come together and essentially swap war stories and talk with one another. It's, it's not just delivering papers and presenting posters. It's a chance for people to really get together. Research and conservation management were becoming better integrated. The idea arose that that same group of federal, state, and private agencies were in the best position to coordinate their efforts in a partnership to enhance um, overall conservation in Hawaii. And there was so much potential in the room, but we, we weren't really realizing it, I thought. You know, we, we could do an awful lot more with that. That led to a really bold set of objectives, and one of the most important ones that I recall that, we, that became sort of the mantra that, that we were following was 
that we wanted to ensure that 90% of the native dominated forest or vegetation, as most of us would call it, uh, that existed in the year 2000 was still in existence uh, 20 years from now. It became a matter of no longer being just a research and management connection, but just a way to bolster the effectiveness of conservation in general. And that's when the Secretariat for Conservation and Biology became the Hawaii Conservation Alliance. So now you have HCA with all the major agency, all the major landowners as participants and partners that didn't exist back in the 80s. So we're really lucky now, 20 years later, to have so many partners involved in conservation and that's been, I think, a huge success and something that people should be very proud of. I think that kind of approach of bringing, being inclusive has more hope than being exclusive or being you know, the hard to reach intellectual person. Today's intellectuals are people who get involved. We have tremendous areas of Hawaii that are, uh, have existing native ecosystems that have some prayer of being uh, restored and managed successfully. The threats we were all dealing with really knew no ownership boundaries. We really had to bring all landowners together over larger scales in those ecosystems and develop joint management plans. In 1991, um, a group of landowners got together on East Maui and formed the East Maui Watershed Partnership. This didn't happen out of the blue. It was a lot of the members and the organizations in HCA. Uh, the first Hawaii Conservation Conference 20 years ago, we had 75 people at Hilo Hawaiian Hotel. Today, we're over a thousand participants. In the last three years of the conference, we had over a thousand participants. So it's, it's just grown tremendously from a very small group of people coming together annually, talking about the, the, the key issues of conservation together to, to, till today, where we have tremendous number of partners as well as community uh, participation in, in the work that we do. The Hawaii Conservation Alliance is looked to as a source of information on conservation issues. So we decided to write a paper, a position paper, on Hawaiian culture and conservation in Hawaii. We, we often have Western science and Hawaiian traditional knowledge separated. What we do is we're trying to work together to make it a joint thing, two sides of the same coin. The 22 different agencies, federal, state, private agencies, all agreeing that not only were the values, the knowledge, and the approach of Hawaiian culture useful to conservation, but it was absolutely essential for the ultimate successful conservation in Hawaii. As, as the HCA community has figured out a long time ago, it's as much about heart and culture and home as it is about science. You know, uh, when I started out working on behalf of conservation in Hawaii, there were a lot of well-trained scientists but there were very few local people. And what has happened to this movement is it's gone from Birkenstocks to rubber slippers. And that's been the most important thing of all. You know, if you take care of the Aina, you get stuff back. You know, you get like some good stuff in life back. The Hawaii Youth Conservation Corps is a great opportunity for Hawaii's youth to be introduced to environmental stewardship as well as sustainability. I'm really proud to see the growth and how many more young people, many more Hawaiians, many more communities and local people are directly engaged. To me, that has been tremendous growth over the past 15 years. It's a waste of time out there just cruising on the street. It's good to come here, work, help, take care of our island, our food so we can eat. You don't have to be a scientist to be in conservation. You don't have to be a manager to be in conservation. You don't have to be a cultural specialist to be appreciating the Hawaiian culture. If it becomes part of our everyday language and not this weird thing that some crazy people are thinking about doing somewhere else, that that's gonna make the difference. So as we look to the future of Hawaii, our natural systems, our culture, our conservation challenges, you have to ask yourself, where do you fit on this timeline? For all you interns just starting your career in conservation or college students that are 
you know, just sort of finding your, your area of interest. I think you can add yourself to the timeline by attending um, every year and um, sharing what, what you know and what you're studying. Make your views known to your friends, to legislators, and if you have a buck here and there, contribute it to an organization of your choice that, that is in this business of trying to preserve these places. First of all, open your eyes. Learn what's around you. Then, you, that, then that, that pins you to that timeline in terms of now you, you're aware. Get off your computers, get outside. You know, dive in, learn the names of the fishes, hike the mountains, develop a relationship with the aina that you live, breathe the air, understand the rain, hear the wind. You know, everyone has a place and a, a special talent. And I think there's room on the timeline for everybody. How can we just stand here and not do anything about it? Someone has to ho'omo and help preserve this legacy. Could it be me? Could I be the one to make the stand, to maul the motherland and take up my kuleana as a Hawaiian? Can I be the one to accomplish this and make a difference? You know, given all of the opportunities we have these days, not only as older people, but as young people, as all kinds of people, especially in Hawaii, with the blessings that we have of learning, of partnering together, of being inspired by the, the great teachers we have through the Conservation Conference, through the great university we have in Hawaii. You know, how can you add yourself to this timeline?